Another thing you can do with paging hardware is a new feature, memory map files. Normally, the way to access a file is to open a file descriptor and then issue read requests and write requests. So we do an open, a sequence of reads, writes, seeks, which move into the file and close. An alternative would be to say, hey, kernel, can you go ahead and load this file into my address space? So that the file foo, of course, these are not to size, will look as though it's just part of my memory. And I can just, in order to read, I just go to the address that I want to read from and use memory operations. If I want to write, I just assign to that memory location. If I want to seek, I just move a pointer up and down. So this is done with the mmap system call. So the mmap takes a file and will place it at a location within your address space. The kernel, of course, has to get involved. So the kernel, when you do this mapping, is probably not going to go ahead and create physical pages for this entire address space and read all of the file from disk. Instead, it can do it on demand. So it creates page table entries, marks them as not present, but keeps meta information that says this address space is a reference to this file. And so therefore, if you try and read and write and something's not present, it can go ahead and page in that particular page from the disk, from the file, put it in memory, and then, all right, so let's look at this example. Let's say this particular page, someone tries to read or write from an address in there, then that can be brought into memory, is read, and we now have a physical page. And the reading or writing would happen to this. So that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, what does it allow? So it allows you to use memory accesses rather than file read and write. That's good. Uh, when does the writing actually take place? We understand kind of how read works in that when you try and read a page that isn't in memory at all, it'll have to load that page, put it in memory. Uh, but what about when you write? So you make some changes. When does that get written back? So it'll be up to the kernel to schedule when to write back pages back to disk. But as we're going to see, the kernel's already going to have to have a situation of having pages on disk that it needs to, sorry, pages in memory that it's going to need to write to disk. And so this can kind of fit right along with that. Uh, the rationale being when you do a write, it would be very expensive if every write actually corresponded to disk I.O. Instead, writes write to buffers of disk blocks in memory, and then those will uh, get queued up to be written back to disk. So this is the same sort of idea, except instead of the write system call that's making changes to the buffers in memory, instead it is user level writes to addresses that are causing changes to the buffers and will then uh, again cause them to be written back to memory. The writing to memory, notice, is not going to cause a, so writing to this memory map file is not going to cause a page fault exception. So how will the kernel know which pages are dirty and not? Right, which pages have been written since they were last read from disk and which not. And that's where we can take advantage of the modified bit in the PTE. Right, so if we look at the PTE, we have different bits, including present and writable. And there's one other, which is the modified bit. And so the modified bit is set by the MMU automatically. So when a write happens to a particular page, the MMU will on the way set the modify bit. So the kernel can then, 
when it loads a page from a file, it can clear the modify bit. And then if it ever needs to know whether this page has been modified, it can just look at the modify bit. Memory map files also are a handy way to uh, share between processes. So you can actually have two processes that both have the same file memory mapped and they can be sharing the same physical pages. Just in the same way that if you're reading and writing, you have two files that are reading and writing that are going to see the same data. One potential downside of the memory map file is it's difficult to have any way to set the end of file. Right? We can easily do that with an API, but it's hard to specify exactly, I have now changed what the end of file is uh, of this file. Whereas if you open a new file, write some stuff, then clearly the file ends where the last write was.